Welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with Colorado's best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so you can make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. Well, it's a great day in Colorado, and welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us Ashley Warren, who's a realtor with Infinity Pros. Ashley, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hey, so I love talking with people and learning about how they do what they do and why they do it. And that's a big word. Why? You know, we want to hear your you know, passion and what draws you and what motivates you. But let's get started first with uh, give us a little bit of your background and your story. And um, how did you get into real estate? Yeah. So my name is Ashley. Um, I am a Colorado native and I am a realtor with Infinity Pros. I grew up predominantly in the Littleton area, but my dad lived in Lakewood and Denver. And then my mom lived in Littleton, Lone Tree and Highlands Ranch growing up. So it's kind of the running joke that I have been training for this career my whole life, uh, getting acquainted (laughs) with multiple neighborhoods. Uh, I have a bachelor's in psychology from CU Denver and a master's in strategic human resource management from DU. And my former career was in marketing and compliance for Chipotle Mexican Grill. Uh, I started my real estate career in 2014. I I mean, I don't even know how to say how that happened. It's probably yeah. just divine intervention because I think it's the best mix of my love for numbers my business mind, and then my passion for relationships with people. And I kind of have just been running in real estate ever since. Uh, In my spare time, I am married. My husband's name is Josh. I have three Newfoundlands. Their names are Wilbur, or sorry, Walter, Bailey, and Rue. We had Wilbur. Uh, So you can find us getting coffee and pup cups. Uh, We used to have hobbies. We used to do a lot of cycling and um, rock climbing, but we just bought a 10 acre property up in Evergreen. And so now all of our free time consists of us cutting down trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And so that, uh, you know, it's really interesting. You say, I don't even know what got me into, cause it's kind of, kind of interesting how, you know, when you look at a certain event in your life personally or professionally and go, this is a monumental event. This is a wonderful event. How did this come about? And you start tracing it back. It's like, well, if it weren't for this, then this wouldn't have happened. Then if it weren't for that, then the other thing wouldn't have happened. And here we are. But whatever that point was that got you into the industry, you had to have been aware and notice whatever that was and then take action. And I think that those are some things that are some really great life lessons for people to go, you know what, let's not hustle and bustle and get grinding so fast that we miss out on opportunities that are right in front of us each and every day. Yeah, for sure. Totally agree. So give us a little bit of an idea of what type of client you work with. Do you specialize in any um, niches of of uh, clients or do you work uh, with just uh, whoever needs to uh, get help with their real estate? So I work with buyers and sellers. I would say that, you know, I was younger when I started my career. So I naturally worked with a lot of first time home buyers that has since transitioned into people buying up into their next home. Uh, I predominantly do people that are uh, looking for their primary house. So I do work a little bit with investors, but they're mostly my clients that are buying a second home or um, something like that. But I would say the majority of my business uh, happens to be west of, I no, yes, west of I-25, <laughs> all north and south. I just run along the foothills and that's really just as a result of where, you know, my referrals come from. But I will work with anyone. I just predominantly stay with residential real estate. That's what I know best. Yeah. Well, and and uh, you said move up buyers, right? So that's typically someone that is buy, uh, buying a house that they need a bigger place because they already are in a place and they need more size or space or whatnot. Yes. Or just a different location. I know for us, yeah. you know, the house we're in now, we just really wanted a bigger yard and that <laughs> that drove the sale. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, and you know, the thing is um, nothing wrong with any other type of segment or niche or whatnot, but let's just compare that to a first time home buyer. That's a whole different type of a need. And I'm sure you do work with first time home buyers, but when we're talking about someone that already owns a home and is looking to move into a different one, bigger, different uh, uh, geographical location, they already know the process and their special extra needs there. Like, Hey, I need to buy this house I, and, and I don't, I don't want to lose out on the contract, but I got to sell this house. What do we do? So talk a little bit about some of those nuances that you're able to work with your clients on in that respect. Yeah. Well, I do always like to tell people your first house helps you figure out what you want in your next house. And I have found that a lot. Um, But when people are looking to sell and buy, um, a lot of times the process is really trying to figure out, do you need to sell before you buy or can you find your replacement home before you sell. And a lot, you know, right now, and it has been the case for the last several years, inventory is so low. It continues to be low. It's a little bit better, but you know, it's, it's hard to find houses right now. Um, a lot of people don't want to sell their house until they find the right replacement because they love their house. They're just looking for something bigger, different, you know, that works better for their family. And so that really is the biggest strategy piece is working between the agent and the lender to figure out what products work best, what loan works best to not move in a panic because we never want sellers who already have a home they enjoy to then all of a sudden be scrambling to find a house for their family. And so I would say it's really important to strategize between myself and the lender um, on what you know, what the best case scenario is for you so that we can find a great next house without pushing you out of your current house. You know, you brought up two things that I want to go a little bit deeper on, which is um, don't move within a panic and strategize. And I think those are Mm -hmm. so powerful to think about because the more frenetic that we get, we're going to make a bad decision or we're going to make a hasty decision or we're going to miss something. And when you can take a step back and have a strategy, then when even when things get a little bit tighter, then you can just fall back and rely on that strategy. So talk a little bit about how you're doing that and how you're doing that with your lender partners, because that's a huge um, uh, opportunity there. Yeah. So the strategy on the front end is you know, we never start looking at houses until we have a plan. You know, I think that buyers can, I think a lot of buyers believe they need to see the house before they know what they want. And there's a process to that for sure. There's an elimination process and it's hard to see what, it's hard to know what you want until you're in there, but you do know the location, you know, your budget, you know, you know, things that are non-negotiables. And I would say, strategizing around those non-negotiables is very, very key before you start putting yourself in a house that you're going to fall in love with. And you're going to have to go outside of those boundaries that you're comfortable with in order to get it. Um, and, and then once you find, so it's, it's having the patience in that process, but being able to move quickly once you find a house, um, Mm. and the, being more pre- as prepared as you can be is going to help you execute that faster. And then with the lender, um, I work with a lender. His name's Matt Deluzio. He's my preferred lender. Obviously, we will work with anyone, but Matt is so dialed into his process. And in that has just helped me really, really support my buyers with so many different products, whether it's a bridge loan. Uh, you know, a conventional loan that we can hold on to a little bit and recast when we sell the house. But again, it's just a conversation with your lender and just knowing being so familiar with your options so that, again, you don't fall in love with the house and then you're scrambling to make it work. Because in those scrambling moments, you're you're going to make a decision that you might regret later. And that's just never a position we want to put our buyers or our sellers in. Let's shift gears for a minute and talk about personally, what's your favorite part of being in the real estate industry and, and helping people find those? I mean, is, is that go back to your uh, education I heard psychology? <laughs> yeah. So I really do love the connection with people. My favorite part of real estate probably comes from my own personal experience in real estate as well. And that's just the opportunity to build wealth 
within owning a house and it happens naturally. You don't have to be an active participant in doing anything. You know, like I'm not a day trader. I would never know how to do that. But I bought, we bought our first house when I was 21. And at the time I was working full time, I was in school full time and we had no money. Like, I don't know who decided to give us a loan, but (laughs) very grateful for it. And, um, you know, we were, it was a very passive investment for us, aside from the fact that we made our mortgage payment, but we were in school, we were working and we had about $10,000 into that house. And it was every single penny that we had. And as a result of just natural appreciation of over the course of the market, we have never put another dollar into our homes. So the equity we built on that first house in Evergreen, we sold it. We put that into our house in Green Mountain, sold that a few years later, and now it's in the house that we own now. And it's just such an incredible wealth engine to see in real time and to be able to help people understand that because a lot of people, you know, especially first time home buyers, it's hard. It's hard to scrape together mm-hmm. the money that you need, but to help them, you know, get to where they need to be. And then three years later, show them their equity that they have. And it's, you know, they don't necessarily have to buy their forever home initially, but to help them gather that wealth and build that equity and move it into another house, you know, two or three times until they're really where they want to be. It's just such an incredible opportunity. I actually did the math just for this podcast. <laughs> the the $10,000 that we put in has 80 times, is that the right way to say it? 80 times itself. Like I would have never been able to save that money, you know, and it's just a natural occurrence of the Denver market. And so we live in an incredible real estate uh, market where it's just naturally going to appreciate. And I love showing people how to utilize that for themselves. You know, the interesting thing with that investment is if you had tried to take that amount of money and turn it into the end result mm-hmm. money, the risk and volatility there would have just been through the roof and you would have ended up most probably with less money than you started. So the the security there and then throw in some tax deductibility, talk to your tax accountant, you know, and it just makes those numbers even more astounding. Right. It's just incredible. I mean, there's no way we could have done it. For one, we didn't we didn't know. <laughs> we just yeah. knew we didn't want to rent. And then we turn around and we're like, oh my gosh, like we we have money to go buy something else that we're going to love. I will say our first home, we did not love and that's okay. It got us to where yeah. we are now. So and as you said, it was all passive. You didn't you had to live someplace already. Right. And, uh, as you said, the multiplier was incredible. Right. So I love showing people how to walk through that themselves. You know, when you talk about um, working with people that own a home and are looking to get into a different home, are you showing them the same strategy that you um, just laid out, which is maybe you don't sell the current house you're in. Maybe if you plan ahead enough and you take out, theoretically, if it works number wise, you take out a home equity line. So you have some money to use for the down payment, but you maintain that house, save it as a rental and you move into the next place so that you're kind of doing reverse investor Yes, I love showing people that as an option. Um, We host first time investor classes that are, you know, I don't work with investors that are just writing offer after offer. That's not my pace and that's not my relationship style. Um, But I love showing people who have a primary house how to keep it and pull out some equity and buy another primary and keep that as you know, a rental and get those tax benefits and get all, Mm -hmm. get all the awesome things that come with it. It's, it's such a cool thing to show people. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, and and you know what, I'm I'm sure that you have to think about something, no matter what, how you lay out what you've done and you show, uh, I heard the voice inflection you mentioned, there's like, as an option, this is not well, you just would be insane if you don't do what I did. This is like, hey, here's something to consider. And if you want to do it, here's the path forward. If you don't, great, we'll go this direction. But here's just some things to consider. So I think that is a a huge piece that people, it sounds to me like people you work with don't feel you know, pushed into a box or pushed into a corner. You're just educating them and teaching them on what some options are. Totally. We. It's funny because we're actually getting ready to remodel 
um, our kitchen. My husband owns a plumbing company, which is a blessing and a curse. He sees, you know, <laughs> they do massive renovations every day. And so he's like, we're going to do ours. Like that's, you're going to do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. But, um, you know, it's an option for people. And I, I just love, le- so those designers, they asked me like, do you just fall in love with houses all day long? And I'm like, I really don't because I'm not in them thinking about myself and thinking about our family and I'm, I'm constantly visualizing them for the family that's buying them. And so in that, I, I to your point, I don't tell them like, you'd be crazy not doing what I am doing because every situation is different and I'm just here to educate, give them their options and then help them walk through what is the best decision for them. Hundred percent. So, uh, what are some of the things that you would point to in your uh, business and your career that you focus on it to grow and to expand your client base? Because it, it sounds to me like you're not into it for the money; you're into it for the relationships and serving your clients. So, what does that look like for you? Yeah. So, people that ask me how I grow my business, I just like I don't know. I just work hard. I mean, that's yeah. like the true the truth of it. it I have always just worked really hard and my business has taken care of itself. Um, I really, my natural default in life is two things, working hard and really loving and building, like growing with people, building relationships with people. And when those two things happen naturally, and I have a total numbers brain, I just think it's very easy to provide an exceptional experience for clients. Um, And I remember a few years ago, I asked someone else who's a business owner in a different industry, but I said, hey, do you have any advice for me to to grow and scale my business? And he said, it's easy, just outwork the next person. And I was like, well, I already, I think I already do that. And I know how to do that. So I just doubled down on it. And so, yeah. um, you know, in real estate, that looks like being really detailed, not, you know, not make or making sure no stone is unturned, you know, having great connections for clients connecting them to realtors and le- or you know lenders, insurance partners that know what they're doing. And that's just my passion. I love making the process easy and simple for them and building a relationship in the meantime, because I want these people to stay connected to me after the closing. I never want someone to go to closing and they're like, oh, good. I don't have to see her anymore. I <laughs> am in it for the long haul uh, because I do, I care about them and their life and how that fits into the real estate process. And so, yeah, it's just, it's been a natural thing. The progression of my business has been natural and I've been super grateful that all nine years of my business, it's been all repeat and referral business. And, you know, that's hard to cultivate. And so I've been just very fortunate. 100%. You know, and, and you know, you ever heard how um, kind of some of the cliches, you know, oh, the dogs can smell fear and people can smell commission breath on you. And those are just an analogies to, to have people realize that, you know what, just be calm in the face of something. And when people can tell that you are just a pushy, pushy person, you know, a little bit of red flags pop up. But when they can tell what you just described, which is I just serve, I just give, I just be good. And I, tr- I treat people like humans and I teach them. And then if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, we'll stay friends and it'll circle back around, you know, maybe one day down the road. People can just tell that. And I I think that that right there is just, that's probably a wonderful business philosophy in and of itself. Yeah, for sure. I believe that a rising tide lifts all boats and I'm not in it just to help the people that are giving me a paycheck. I mean, I have I have people that refer me business that have never bought a house from me. They're probably not going to buy a house from me because they're not in the position of life to move. And I still want to be a resource for them. And Mm. so I think that when you just understand your niche and where you can add value, I mean, the business is going to come. You don't have to worry about that. 100%. What do you find is some of the best ways that you connect with and serve your clients? You know, because a lot of people are, you know, just technology text and sometimes people are phone call or visits. What do do you have a mix of, of all of those or what is your preferred way? (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, years ago, and I'm still, I'm so bad. I have reviews. I know where to ask for them right now, but I'm so not technological. I'm the worst millennial 
there is. And so my clients used to ask me, where can I leave your review? I'm like, oh, I don't have that. Just send people (laughs) my way. Um, But I would say the best way to connect technology wise is really just send me a text message and we'll hop on the phone call. I know that's not great for 25 year olds, so I will text you, but (laughs) (laughs) I, I love phone calls, but I would say like, I really am a personal connector in, you know, especially when it comes to real estate, because I do, I bought a house when I was 21. I know what it's like to be a terrified first time home investor. I have Um, you know, I know the experiential part of that moving up into multiple houses, we have a long term rental and two short term rentals in Florida, I know that I know what that's like. And so I love just connecting on the experience level of things um, with my clients. And I really feel like the best way to do that is over coffee or, you know, on a phone call, but I'll I'll do text message if that's what we're going to (laughs) do. Yep. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, speaking up, if so, way... oh, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I no, I, I want you to way to I connect with people is is that experience part. So yeah. I a couple of years ago, it was probably four years ago at this point, because I think this is my fourth year. I was trying to think of something that I could give to my clients that really they're just going to love and cherish for years. I mean. Not not in a way that when they see it, they think, oh, Ashley is so great. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to give them something that they would use. And I realized that one of the most cherished things we have as a family is our photos. You know, we have photos taken every year and it is as a direct result of one of my very good friends as a photographer. And so she reminds me every year, like, hey, you need to put this on your calendar because otherwise I wouldn't. I mean, we get busy, we just, you know, we get distracted. And so I decided to start hosting a client appreciation event that is photo shoots for my clients. And so it's an opportunity for them to come get photos of their family. You know, if nothing else, they get their holiday card out of it. But what's happened is year after year, they get updated photos and they have this moment in time captured for most people wouldn't really put it on the calendar, right? They just get distracted. And so I've been able to really connect with them in that way and provide this awesome gift for them, their families. And it's just, it's just such a cool experience. And, you know, shout out to my friend, Amy, because I couldn't do that (laughs) without her, but it's just been, it's again, it's just been the coolest way to stay connected with my clients. Great way to stay connected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of staying connected, if someone is listening to this going, I must get your help. What you said has resonated with me. Ashley, what is the best way that people can reach out and connect with you and learn more and and, uh, go that way? Yeah. So the best way is my phone. Um, My phone number is 720-938-1129. Otherwise, email is Ashley Warren, R-E, like real estate, at gmail.com. Um, or you can probably find my car at a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> it has drool on the sides probably from my dogs if I haven't made it to the car wash that day. But I'm always available for a conversation. Awesome. Well, thanks a million for coming on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.coloradorealestateleaders.com.